And guys. we are live. <laughs> uh, let me or graveyard smash. go ahead and fix oh this. Oh, I got to fix mash. this one camera right here. The monster mash. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. I need to fix. <laughs> I need to fix this channel because they just did this. So first, before you get oh, broken, God, we're going to go to theater of the mind here. Oh. So we lost Joey's camera when Damien came on. <laughs> I am so zoomed in. Yes, wow. you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> welcome wow. that, that was psychedelic <laughs> welcome everyone um as we had some my yep. mild tech issues and you're about to get some psychedelic again Whee! as i have to go back to <laughs> so here we are for our weekly yeah. discussion on the topic that plagues our world at this time of the year how much pumpkin spice is too much some say no there is no such unquantifiable no. and some say just a little bit is too much but in Most reality we're satan in reality here we are playing our dungeons and dragons game so excuse me but it's going to get a little bit psychedelic here because i have to go to this other screen get joey's character back so enjoy this peek behind the curtain guys yes you get to see all the follows that i'm getting not that many but we'll see we'll see if we can grow so it while i'm help. doing all this why don't we start off um and yeah i definitely need to fix uh ath's, <laughs> ath's camera because i see focused on the ear so why don't we go ahead and do our introductions here real quick starting in camera one We'll go for our wizard cat dragon. Oh, yeah. So, hi, I'm Josh. I play uh, Miyagi, the Draconic Lineage Sorcerer Divination Wizard, so wizard cat dragon. Um, yeah, that's about it. it. Expect things to go sideways real fast. And next, we have Damien the DM. Hello! I, I currently can't see Foundry because, oh, there we go. You gotta stay on that tab, unfortunately, because Foundry was like, fuck you to me. But other than the crazy chaos of my life, the crazy chaos in the game is that of Elksin, the white dragonborn ranger who sets demons free, you know, just generally doesn't understand consequences yet, so. She'll learn. Uh, next, we have returning, because I believe... No, you were here last session. You just... Uh, there was a couple sessions that you missed uh, before. Yeah. Uh, Jay in Demand. Hey, all. I am Jay in Demand. I play uh, Sazen Zahana, easily the most powerful person in this group. Uh, Blade Singer Wizard. Um, fender off of Hater Cats and uh, the Breaker of Chains up above me. Or, I guess, to the left of me, depending on where y'all are looking at. <laughs> um, and yeah, excited to be here. I have uh, dispatched two creatures so far. If you want to compare that to Wizard Cat Dragon's uh, none, <laughs> we're gonna we'll go from there. All right. So I cast Magic Missile at highest level um, and targets this indirectly, killing her instantly. <laughs> Next, we have um, our newest player to the campaign, Moose. Ah, uh, good evening. This is Moose. I'm playing Hilvog von Lichtenstein, the cl the cleric artificer of Paylor, out to hunt monsters. And he definitely has a few here today. And last but definitely not least, we have our AFK player from last session who is questioning her life choices, seeing as one of her real life friends is about to be skewered. I don't mean you, Josh. Not at all. <laughs> we have Exo Brit. Yep. I'm Exo Brit. I play Ath, the half orc, half to be determined um, barbarian. Uh, she yep. has been trying to change her life for the better and has joined this group to help them along her their journey and her journey as well. And 
I guess really not last, uh, because I'm last this time. Uh, I am Knights Fall. This is my Twitch channel. This is a completely homebrew game, homebrew world. Now, some notes about this world. In my world, intelligence creatures will behave intelligently. Uh, so all of the preconceived notions of alignment and all that are thrown out the damn window because you just don't know. When we last left off with our party, they had basically solved a mystery in uh, this resort. They, yes, they had a little Scooby-Doo adventure and now they have a base of operations. But unfortunately it needs building up and they were not able to repair their ship. A couple days have went by before a very thick fog started to roll in. Uh, thunder cracking off in the distance before a former member of the crew, one that Ath is definitely well, well, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Acquainted with. Balin Warm Weather or Warm Water. What is it? I think warm it's weather. weather. Warm Weather. Who was recently discovered to not only be a roguish type of character, but a warlock of an unknown being trying to take the ship away from Captain Talia. For those of you who do watch the stream, you notice that there are a few more enemies on the screen because I've added Captain Talia and Salas on to the board, the captain and the first mate. Now for my players, there are more people on the ship. There are more combat going on, but this is the combat that you guys are responsible for. Also for my viewers, you will see other things on the screen that the players do not don't give them away. I do not have the uh, capability to actually let me I'm checking out the stream now. It's oh, we're not getting too many uh, drop frames. So that's good. I don't have the capability of running a completely separate um, account at the same time. So who's ready to get things started? Me. All right. Oh, let's so. kick this big. Oh, I'm this fucking big. ready. All righty. So, we're going to start at the top of the round. It is Balin's turn. So, Balin <laughs> looks around and sees Captain Talia. In fact, she is going to be running up this way. Running across. Coming up next to Miyagi. His eyes almost completely waterlogged locks with hers and says oh it's such a pleasure to meet an old friend again oh, you don't deserve this ship nor do you oh, what can I say? let's just leave it at that shall we i fucking butchered that <laughs> <laughs> oh this is rough as he raises his hand up his hand clenches into a fist, brings it down, and almost on cue, as soon as he brings it down, you hear a lightning crash. And the entire boat lurches off to the side. You need everyone to make a strength saving throw. I'm no good at that. I understand. Ah! Mine's cocked, so I'm going to roll it again. I know it shows on D&D that it was, like, good, but it's cocked, so I'm going to roll okay. it again. And I should have kept my first score. That's a two. That's a two. Okay. <laughs> two, four. Oh, that's bad. That's on par. That's on par. That's on par. Okay, those of you, Ath, you are perfectly fine. You are good. <laughs> uh, how did Elkson do? I'm I'm pulling it up. It my phone logged me out. Okay. Not one. Today is a fucking lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> Not one. Okay. I'm oh, up geez. in the fucking crow's nest. I'm gonna fall to my fucking death before a round of combat. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yep. 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 Those of you who failed, which is everyone except for Ath, get knocked five feet to the south on your map and are knocked prone. No do damage. I fall out of the fucking crow's nest? You get to do a dexterity saving throw to hold on because you are falling out of the crow's nest right now. <sighs> so Zen, you don't get to get pushed no, that back. That was a check, not a saving throw. Damn it. So Zen, you do not, because you're on the steps. Mm -hmm. You um, don't get pushed back. However, you do take three bludgeoning damage because you get rammed into the stairs and you are knocked prone. Right. Meowgi, you know where you're at, right? Yep, sure do. You are at the feet of Molly. Yep. That was a 12. 12. 12 is good enough. You fall out of the crow's next nest and reach up and you are on the bottom lip of it. You're holding on by one hand. It is as if this ship was hit by something large <laughs> off the side on the north. All right, so I get I get shoved off to the south. What about the guy that's next to me to the south? They seemed uh, prepared. The guy next to you is still there. I mean, he was five feet away from you. Is the game supposed to still be paused? Actually, no, it is not. There you go. It is now Captain Talia's turn. She comes up, sees this uh, sea spawn attacking Meowgi, looks down. Now's not the time to take a nap. You need to get up. And we'll target as soon as I get this all working. Target this sea spawn. Captain Talia is going to let me go ahead and turn off this heads up display for Talia. Talia is going to take an attack at this C spawn. 17 is definitely going to hit. Alrighty. You see, she rolls with this um, head, comes up and just thrust two times very quickly and you see two pinpoints almost almost in the same spot and as this green sickly blood starts to pour out of them he's still up though that completes talia's turn it is elkson's turn i was looking through my spells to see if i had fucking anything but nope, I just have to what strength check to try and pull myself back up. Def athletics or check, acrobatics. definitely. Acrobatics. Uh, it this is more athletics because acrobatics is more when you can actually move your body around. This is more of just pulling pulling yourself up. And how, here goes my plus zero. How far is Oaks and away from me, Uh, twenty-five feet up, and then uh, ten feet. Um, north okay. and five feet to the left. Okay, because I was going to say, if she's within 30 feet, I can do something. <laughs> but no, I can't. Oh, dear God, that's a 19. <laughs> <laughs> 19. You use your action. You pull yourself up. Now you are facing away. You're facing towards the north right now. I need you to make a perception check, please. Okay. That's a 15. You see, as you were pulling yourself up, this small halfling that was climbing up the pole, covered in knives everywhere. And he sees you seeing him. He's like, fuck. <laughs> you, that actually saved you. You were about to be ambushed by an assassin. Okay. <laughs> Yay! So he is, and he's, he's about to get a breath weapon to the face as soon as I can. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that actually did save you there. That was good luck there because he was gonna get an auto crit because oh, you failed your perception check earlier. All right, 
It is this Sahugan's turn. I believe he do needs have, to do. What's that? Do I have my hunter's mark out already? Like I have the yes. spell slot extended for it. Yes, okay. so your hunter's mark is on Balin. Uh, wisdom okay. saving throw, correct? Yes, DC fourteen wisdom save. Alrighty. Uh, that's gonna be a fail with a twelve. All right, let me get three D eight out there for you. I will show Pinton back on the screen. All right, 12 damage. Oh, he's looking pretty hurt already. Um, he is going to move up. And since you are prone, he is going to take two strikes he's actually gonna not even use his spear he's gonna try to ju jump on you not grappling you with a claw and a bite attack i don't think that's gonna hit here uh 16. yes all right that is two sla two slashing damage with the claw i'll take care of it on foundry and with the bite. Oh, bite definitely is going to hit. That's a total of five damage um, all together. I rolled very low right. on damage. Well, I need you to do a constitution saving throw. And you're a warcaster, correct? Uh, no. Nope. Spirit Guardians goes away. Uh, I don't... Alrighty, that is that Sahugan's turn. It is this other Sahugan's turn who is attacking Sazen at advantage. I'm going to take two spear attacks. That's a 22 to hit. Miss. And that is a miss as well. So Zen, it is your turn. All right. See this spear come down on you and you're on the stairs and you just roll out of the way. Roll one more time as he pierced your cloak. You have tears in your cloak now. Oh, it is on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to use my half movement to do a... Uh, a kick up. Okay. So I get up with like a flourish. All right. Uh, I'm going to cast haste on myself. Yeah, cast haste. So you are no longer prone. Let me take that off. And you are going to be hasted. So I believe that um, I drop down to 15, but then get plus 10 for movement. Is that how that works? Uh, you're 20. Yes, you would get plus 10. So you would have 25 now. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm going to be casting that spell for you since I know that you do not have forge. Let me just make sure. Haste. All right. So should mark so the one that's, concentrating. The one that is um, on Helvog, that's the one that attacked me? No. You have one Which that's directly southeast of you. Oh, that's right, kind of southwest. Cool. I'm sorry, southwest and northeast. You are oh, flanked. So surrounded. Yes, you are. Oh. Well, then that is most. The fog does make it a little bit harder to see. It does. It does. It changes my plans a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna use oh, the I mean, action. That's what fog is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That is, that is what God intended with fog. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use my new action that was granted to uh, attack the thing in front of me all right uh let's go to actions and i'll use my spark blade mks1 okay You're using any charges not yet that's okay. a 19 to hit 19 does hit all right 
for measly six damage. That was raging Jason. Okay. All right. And then for my bonus action, I am going to attack well, again th- with. So you have haste, which is an action. Mm-hmm. Then you get. Oh, that's right. Because I, I can't use my offhanded because I use the spell as my action. All right. I am good. That is my go. All right. All right, then we have Molly's turn. Yep. Molly, and actually, I'm sorry, I was supposed to change this. You see Molly is looming over you and you see her sword come up and right before it strikes down, you hear screaming, you will not hurt the master as this imp becomes invisible or visible and launches himself stabbing her in the face <laughs> i love him and sorry if that was a you little are loud welcome. sorry if that was a little loud so he that is going to attempt boy. to sting molly <laughs> i love him <laughs> natural, I rolled two <laughs> natural 20s. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy I freed that thing. <laughs> oh my god. For thematic reasons, Molly will fail her saving throw. For the two natural 20s, I'm going to say she fails. So Molly takes six points of crit damage and then 17 points of poison damage. Can your familiar do that, Sazin? I'll show you what my familiar can do. <laughs> and let's see. Um, yeah, that's the that's all the poison does. As you see, Molly is now trying to bat this familiar away and is going to attack it. So, you see Molly AC of 13, which is Xbit's AC. You see, as she pulls this sword, a th- green liquid starts to drop from it. As it And since you're on the ground, Miyagi, you definitely see these drops hit and sizzle. As Ixbit takes a total of 11 piercing damage and 4 acid damage. Oh, and the sword's magical, isn't it? It is Ath's turn. Ath, you hear the sounds of combat going on. You are going to use half your movement to get where you're at on screen. As you come up, you see Miyagi on the ground. You see Talia right next to him trying to fend off this weird fish type person that looks like it has spikes that are being thrown out. You see Balin to your left. You see Molly attacking this imp. You see Silas to your right. Fending off against three of these uh, fish type people. What do you do? You have half movement. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that Miyagi and the captain might, should be able to take them out. So I think I might go help Silas. But I am going to go into a frenzied rage. I hit your, you are raging. You all hear the unmistakable roar that you've heard many times before of your half orc companion as she just <laughs> screams and goes running away from Miyagi. Advantage since I'm frenzy. 
No, but you are flanking. However, you do notice as you get closer, Silas is hurting very badly. Mm -hmm. He is bleeding out of multiple different wounds. He's holding his stomach right now as he's just on defensive, pure defensive. So you do have advantage on the one directly above you. A 21 will definitely hit. You see... The, your axe, you bring your axe down as it looks like you're going to miss as the axe sort of shifts and comes out and you hit for a total of 11 slashing damage and 3 acid for your first attack you have 2 more Seventeen definitely hits. We'll put the damage on. This guy looks hurting, but he's still up. Oh, buddy! Alrighty. I don't know if I should go for another one. Let's Your choice. One. And then not at advantage, right? Because I'm not flanking. Correct. Which one are you going after? Uh, the one on the right. Ten, unfortunately, does not hit. However, your axe has something special, doesn't it, if you miss? Surprise. Roll your d20. Yay for that pulsating Vaisney shaft. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, and this is the first time you've seen it, you miss as you see part of the blade seems to come out and form these two massive jaws and it just misses does that complete your turn yeah i can't move anymore so hellvog you are up and you are prone oh well <clears throat> i stand my ass up all right that's half your movement oh i don't need any more than that Where are you? There. We'll just recast it. Spirit Guardians. Alrighty. That's annoying. So we have a DC. Thirteen or fifteen? Thirteen. Okay. And as a number of creatures, it must make these. There. Alright. Creature enters the area the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. Uh yeah, they're all gonna have to make a save right now. The Sahugan fails. And is dead. Wow, a zero on a save. <laughs> Can you get any deader than dead? <laughs> This one does save. It'll take half damage. This one, the Sahugan that is on, um, oh nope, that saves. So that one is dead. And it just hits, it just hits the Sahugan that's on the other side of Sazen. Now, do you say th to your spirit guardians that Sazen is okay? Well, yeah, yeah, all my party members are. Okay, just making sure. That one does save. All right, does that complete your turn? Uh, I'll move up to here. <clears throat> all righty. 
since I can't cast the spell and draw my shield and weapon. Alright, and your spirit guardians definitely moves with you. Alright, it is going to be Silas is just uh, is just taking the def dodge action because he's about dead. It is Pinton's turn. Pinton, as you see, climbs up very quickly, jumps up, and is in the crow's nest with you. Knew exactly what Elton's doing. <laughs> Bow in one hand, arrow in the other, big old middle fingers. As he goes in for stabs, you're too close to actually um, to actually throw daggers at you. That's a shame. He doesn't get a sharpshooter feat. Fuck you. The two rangers will be up close. Sure. <laughs> Alrighty. So, first attack. That's a 20. That hits. Offhand attack. That's a natural 20. Fuck! Uh, you take on the first hit. Let me go ahead and move this guy out of the way. Eight points of piercing damage. And on the second one, you also take eight points of damage. That's with it doubled? Yeah, that's with it doubled. I rolled low. Oh, thank the heavens. So... And let me double check to see what his level is. Yep, action surge. As Damien, you're my favorite person tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that I had a is lot of sugar today, so I'm very expressive. Eleven to hit. Fuck you, that misses. <laughs> And a natural nine. <laughs> As he then takes the disengage action and starts climbing back down. I don't care. He's still fucking in range for breath weapon. Um, let's see. Ten feet up. He's 20 feet down. Okay. okay. I could do the straight line. 30 feet. Five feet wide. That's so. true. It is He's now. He's gonna get his ass frozen and fall off the fucking pole. <laughs> it is now the dragon's turn. Like... Oh fuck! You see off the north bow this massive creature, this eel, what with the a fuck? stark blue fur coming out of the head. A um, furry eel? <laughs> yes, it has fur. As you see, it takes a deep breath and it's. Oh, it's floating in the air. It's not even in the in the water. It's kind of floating in there as you see lightning shoot out of its mouth. What Let's the see. Fuck? This is not cool. I just joined this group and you're going <laughs> to kill us all. So I need Silas, Ath, the Sea Spawn, and Meowgi. To make, let's see, what is that? Sorry, I was answering a question in chat. What in the fresh hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> a dexterity saving throw. Miyagi, you have disadvantage. disadvantage. Yep. Silas gets knocked down even if he makes a save. <laughs> okay, let's see how much that does. That oh, is no, ooh, ooh. 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 So we're starting with the TPK. <laughs> so you take a total of 48 points of lightning damage. That C spawns dead. That C spawns dead. Captain Talia is hurt. I'm unconscious. And Miyagi's ah! unconscious. Well, there goes my turn. I'm getting something to drink. <laughs> Ath, you have already taken. You're hurting. Okay. It is now. Oh, and then this dragon eel slips out 
back down under the water. Yeah, fuck you, Dragon Nail. What in the nine hells? <laughs> Come on, Brian. All right. So the RP moment is when we arrive to heaven. Is that is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to heaven. I set loose some demons. The Zen has done some shady shit. Meowgi's done some shady shit. has done some shady shit. <laughs> like, I don't think any, like, a single one of us is going to heaven. That's true. As this um, warlock no, next to Hellfog reaches up and you see a dark gateway appear in this 20 foot area it's bitter cold and blackness oh. yep <sighs> fuck does that reach me it does not because you're 25 feet up okay so i need Suzanne and helva wait is that a spell that, that is doing? a spell um, one second. I don't know. I'm going to cast Counterspell as a reaction. And it's a third level spell. It, the hunger of Hadar does not happen. That's what he could stay hunger. <laughs> that would have been a uh, failed death save on Miyagi. That is its turn. It is now the sea spawn's turn. Uh, Miyagi, that was sincerely from the most powerful person in this group. <laughs> This sea spawn will run up and take. You see it. Its mouth opens up. Its jaw kind of pops and gets like three times as large as this long, spiny tongue comes out and lashes out at Captain Talia. You see, she bats away. Ah! It is. Ixbit would have went, but Ixbit already uh, was holding his action before. You see, Ixbit. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Miyagi, do you have any healing potions on you? No? Let me check my inventory. I don't know if I do. Inventory. Oh, actually, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Because <laughs> Ixbit was a little yeah. naughty. Ixbit runs, flies up to Captain Talia, snatch something off her belt, and... Pours it down your throat. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's Talia's last healing potion. You are healed for. Um. Uh, thirty-six points. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but Woo, he takes an attack. He takes an attack of opportunity from Molly. Oh, 25 definitely hits. You see, as Ixbit, you come to consciousness as you see this red, disgusting imp looking at you as he's pouring down and massaging your throat to make you swallow <laughs> this healing potion as he takes a, another stab with this rapier as you see him and he's on the ground and he is hurt he is extremely hurt he's almost dead it is this Suzanne yes you start to see shadows appear around you as they get closer and they clench on your body you feel that you've been hexed and then you see two beams of greenish black energy strike at you. Okay. Let's see if they hit. That's going to be a 23. Miss. Uh, 
That's a miss as well. Meowgi, it is your turn. Woo! I didn't think I'd get here. All right, so... Meowgi's going to slowly stand up. Slowly? Okay, that's your entire action. No, fuck off. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do Subtle Spell. Frost Fingers. Angle it. Words. Yeah, this right here. And so I want to try and hit Molly in the, if I can, the Sahagin right in front of me. Alrighty. Yep, you definitely can. So that is going to be a constitution saving throw. That is going to be an 11 for Molly, and she's good at that. Woo! And the C-spawn actually saves, so that's odd. Woo. They're not good at that. Okay, Molly has taken her first damage. And I want to tell Xbit to fly off the ship. He's about to die, and I can't do much. I can't do much. Or fly up or something. Alrighty. Almost in your Sazen. Uh -huh. Your attention is towards this warlock. And you're being flanked on both sides. But almost almost have ESP in your dance as you just bend down as a spear comes by and just nicks your ear. No damage. This C spawn on Meowgi. Is going to unclench his jaw as his tentacle like mouth reaches out around your throat for six to hit you at sixteen. Shield AC is twenty one. As the shield takes place, it looks like he was trying to choke you. Top of the round, Balin's turn. And Balin will call upon his patron. So what does Balin say to Talia? Oh dear. Um... Oi, fucker! Prepare to. I can't do the voice anymore. Um. Fuck! Got this, think Australian. Oh, oh it's hard to do that. Oh, fuck. Prepare to. feel the wrath of. I gotta pull up the notes. <laughs> Sorry. Tech may rock? Yeah. That's correct. Prepare to feel the wrath of Tech Merak. Right, As I'm you see his time. hand reach out, Talia blinks out of existence. As she is banished. Do I know he cast a spell? You do know he cast a spell. 
would I know that there's a saved involved? I would say yes. Can I give her my 18? You can. Talia is back. So Balin will then use a legendary action. <laughs> as he and looks, make him waste it. as he looks over to you, Miyagi. That's quite enough of that. As you see, he reaches his hand out, and you see similar shadows start to appear around you and almost choking you. That's it. Okay. Take note, that was an Australian accent. (laughs) So Zen is now the target. (laughs) Why am I always the target? (laughs) Talia. Oh, yeah. That sea spawn is dead. You see Talia come up, bat away this tentacle, and take another two quick stabs directly into the sea spawn's throat. You see two perfect pinpoints right next to each other as it just goes <laughs> falls down to the ground. Elkson, it is your turn. You said Silas looked really hurt, right? Silas is on the ground. He's not moving. Would he be able to hear Healing Word? Uh, what is your range on Healing Word? Uh, it is... 60 feet? You're well within range, even at the 20-foot height. Okay, cool. Get your ass up! There's monsters to fight! As I do Healing Word as a bonus action. And then just lean over and fucking breath weapon the shit out of this little assassin <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Roll your healing a, word. Yeah, that's a second level healing word I'll use. Alright. Um uh, Habuski. For a whopping seven. He's up, though. He was about to do uh death saving throws. And your breath weapon, what type of save is it? It is a constitution. Oh, he's not good at that. Why yeah, couldn't it have been dexterity? That's a natural 20, but that was not advantage, so he has 11. Ha! 12, baby! <laughs> <laughs> damage? Eat 10 ice damage. Fall off the fucking pillar. <laughs> I'm going to say he needs to make a dexterity saving throw for that. Fucking icicles to the face, bitch. (laughs) However, he is definitely still grabbing on and is sliding down. He's using your ice to get down quicker, actually. He rolled a national 20. Okay, I'll just fucking shoot him in the face. He'll be in range of my bow by then. That's true. (laughs) This is such a delightful new side of Damien. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) That one's dead. So, Zen, it is your turn. All right. Uh, can I tell, because I don't know if anybody else knows, which is the warlock that put the hex on me? Um, I will give you a perception check for that, because there's a lot going on here. My perception's only plus two, so let's see what this does. It's fucking flying furry eels. <laughs> that is a five. Uh, no, you do not. You're not sure. Okay. So what I'm gonna do. Okay. Um, in an incredible acrobatic display, I am going to vault over Helvog, then do a slide between the legs of whatever monster is attacking Helvog on his opposite side, and get on the opposite side of that creature. And mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be taking two attacks of opportunity, but I'm going to risk it. Well, you'll be taking one because the one below here is actually um, is dead. Oh, nice. So... Um, so you'll be taking one from the Sahugan down here. However, you do need to give me an acrobatics check. I have advantage because of Blade Song. And my acrobatics is a plus seven, so here's hoping I don't fuck it up. So it's a 25 for the first one, but just for fun, let's see what I get. You barely get missed on that spear attack. 
You're on the other side. All right, and I'm just going to unleash with sword attacks. So my first one, I am going to, because I can do a cantrip as part of my two attack actions, I am going to do Booming Blade. Mm -hmm. So let us do the Booming Blade. Oh, that sucks. That's a 13. 13 to hit. Misses. All right, second attack. Your haste is gone, by the way. I believe Booming Blade is Sorry. a concentration spell. What's that? Isn't Booming Blade a concentration spell? No. Is that? Well, I mean, it didn't hit either way, but I don't think Booming Blade's concentration. And yeah, let's see. It might. I might be thinking what? of the Smite spells, um, which are concentration. Booming Blade. Nope, it's at will. Okay, good deal. Then it is... Not concentration. I was thinking of the smite spells, like searing smite, stuff like that. Yeah, gotcha. No, this one is just... If it would have hit, it wouldn't have affected. Uh, so that was the 22 to hit. 22 definitely hits. All right, and that'll be for eight damage. All right. All right, for my uh, hasted action, I'm going to slice again. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> that is a 12, so I'm sure that misses. That definitely misses. All right, and then from my offhand, oh, I'm so I'm so upset. My offhand, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, attack with my regular scimitar. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna talk about this round anymore. That's the end of my turn. <laughs> <laughs> it is now Molly's turn. As Molly looks over to oh wait, me wait, I'm so sorry. Uh, these should have been at advantage. They should have been. Okay, so I'm going to do that whole round over again. <laughs> no, you your second attack does miss because you did roll two misses back to back. So you do get two new attacks with your offhand. Okay, so I would have had four attacks altogether. I rolled four times, so my first two... Uh, so one attack hit, the, the second attack missed. And then the third so one missed. The third one missed, which would have been the second. So, yes, you'll get two more. But, yeah. And while this is going on, go ahead and do all your math. Meowki, you see Molly come up. She looks at the exchange between you two and looks directly at Meowki as she stabs at Ixbit. Oh, that's one way to get rid of the imp. <laughs> As Ixbit rolls out of the way, because she only hit an 11. So for her second attack, she's going again. You don't stress him out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? If you're yes! watching the stream, I rolled a two and a four. So Ixbit then rolls the other way as she just goes. Bah! Please tell me he goes like na 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 boo boo or something like that. <laughs> yes. As Ixbit will be go. Eh. Fuck. <laughs> That's all he's going to do. He is. <laughs> he's hurting. He is. Uh, let's see. Ixbit is at five health. Uh, uh, Brian. Yes. I'm sorry, you finish and then I'll tell you what I did. Go ahead. Alright, so the second, the third attack with my hasted action was a natural 20. Okay. Um, and then my offhand missed. The natural 20, I did activate charges on my spark blade. I did the three charges. Okay. Um, altogether, 26 points of damage. Okay, you more than doubled his health. Left. Okay. So he is definitely dead. The hex is still on you. Gotcha. All right, and that is my go. Ath, you are up. Okay. I can attack and then move, right? Absolutely. Okay, so I want to attack the one that is on the right of me again. Okay. 
Oh, that's definitely a hit. You come down and cleave into this creature's stomach. You see parts of it keep on flying out with the force of your blow. It's missing pieces of it. Cool. And then I want to... You only take... It's still up. It's still up? Oh, it's still up. I know, but I want to move down. <laughs> it's up to you. I am going to move down. Okay, you get two attacks of opportunity on you. Oh, buddy. First one hits an AC of 17. Yeah. Second one, actually, it's not going to be that one. Hold on. He's going to shoot poison quills at you. Second one is a natural one. That misses. You take a total of three bludgeoning damage because you take half of bludgeoning while you're raging. And you are there with Molly. You have two attacks. Mm -hmm. And they're going towards her. Seventeen to hit. Seventeen definitely hits. Then seventeen again. Wow! And two attacks. You have you come down on Molly. She tries to bat your axe away, but just her flimsy sword is it's no match. It bends to make sure that your axe still hits. Does that complete your turn? Um, it does. Helvog, you are up. Does that mean she has disadvantage to attack since her sword is bent? No, it's a rapier. It does bend. Aww. D. <clears throat> Did anything on the ear look undead? Hmm... I will let you have a perception check to see, because there's a lot going on. There's one creature, two creatures here that might be undead, but it's nowhere near you. Oh, roll already. Twenty-one will definitely show you. You see that this, um, this female that Ath is fighting, her moves are kind of janky, and the same thing with this halfling that's coming down. He's kind of, uh, even though he's moving very fluidly, you see wounds on him that should be mortal, but he's moving perfectly fine. Well then. Oh, and the tentacle does disappear. He lost. Uh, he lost that. <clears throat> well, then, by the power of Paylor, all right. <laughs> Let's see. Start with two such a turn. Up. Dead. And what's your range on that? Uh, I think it's sixty. All righty. Let's do some saving throws. All right. It's just to use feature. There it is. All right. Note 30. All right. 30 feet. Okay. Let me see how far this I is. Think, I think they're within range, though. Molly is just in range. Uh,. Penten is not because he's still up high. And he saved anyway, so. Um they can one minute, turn creature spends its turn moving up. Okay, you see this human female look over at Helvog and just has 
her eyes go wide and she turns towards Ath. Um, but it's not her turn yet, so. Silas, even though he is healed, he is still on the ground and not moving. It is Penton's turn. He gets That's down. Okay, play dead. He gets down on the ground. We'll see Miyagi there, and we'll take two daggers and start throwing them at him. That is a 26 to hit. Yep. That is eight piercing damage. Plus, Molly is still threatening you, even though she has turned. That is 13 sneak attack damage. Second dagger. Twenty-three for six piercing damage. You see two daggers appear out of the fog. Just stick into your shoulder. You're still up though. That oh. healing potion did you good. Yeah. <laughs> sure it did. At this time, you all feel the boat lurch up from underneath as if something hit it from underground. I need everyone to make a strength saving throw as you all are uh, jumped up. Was that the little assassin asshole that attacked me, by the way? Yep, that was. Strength and not dex? Uh, actually, no. Dex saving throw. You're correct. It would be uh, a dex because you are trying to fall down gracefully. I mean, I, 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 oh, thank God. I threw myself on that. <laughs> Yeah, you screwed me too. I went from a 14 to a 10. No, oh, I see a 17 on you, Elkson. Oh? Yeah, 17 dex save in Foundry. Did did mine roll? Nope. I think you rolled Elkson's. No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, I, I can't log into Foundry right now. I am clicked on Elkson, that's why. I was well, like, why we'll am take, I proficient? We'll take Elkson's. I got a 15. 15, you're fine. Uh, Suzanne, what'd you get? 17. 17, you are fine. No, I'm sorry. 21, I'm extra fine. You are not fine, you fail. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else besides Ath and Helval, you are knocked prone again, but no damage. You are just, the entire ship moves up a couple feet and then crashes back down. I've fallen off the fucking crow's nest again. No, you fought, you made your save. 17. Okay. I'm taking what Miyagi rolled because he rolled it before you said anything. Whichever was first. Okay. So, so, thank you, Josh. Wait, hold on. You said, you said everyone you. but who is okay? No, everyone except for um, Ath and Helvog. Mm -hmm. They fall on the ground. But okay. I made my saving throw. I got a 21. Yes, Ath and Helvog. Okay. Everybody. Ath and Helvog are the only ones that fall. <laughs> Your name is Sazen. Well, I'm blonde. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I was confused too. That's why I thought I was falling off the crow's nest. Because <laughs> he, he did say everyone, but those yeah, two, yeah, those two, were... knocked over. Yeah. You see, okay. it is now Ixbit's turn. Ixbit gets up as he looks around. He knows Miyagi's direction. I'm. I can't leave you. All. And then he sees these <laughs> daggers come up and he you see fire in his eyes as he looks over at this halfling and he rushes at him. As he attempts to sting him. Do it, do it, nat 20, nat 20. Nat 20, nat 20. <laughs> Not a Fuck nat 20. Up the but a 24 to hit. Ha! Yes! <laughs> Fuck up that halfling, bitch! And a fail on his saving throw. You see Expit. He, his, he is bleeding. He is hurt. 
you see half of his wing doesn't even work as he comes up and then does a half somersault as puts his stinger directly in Pinton's eye. Yes! As Pinton takes seven piercing damage and 16 poison damage. Yes! Hell yeah! As he screams, You will not hurt the master! <laughs> is the halfling still standing? Halfling is still standing, but he's badly injured. What is your AC right now, Suzanne? With the haste, I know it's high. Uh, right now it's 25. <laughs> <laughs> hey, natural 20 will work. Um, is... Oh, that's not towards... <laughs> is, is that the one that's north of me? Yep. DC 13 wisdom save. It's actually just outside of your range, I believe. If I'm looking at the 15 feet, it is on the square. Like if it was, okay. if it was gotcha. here, it would be in, but it's gotcha, here. Gotcha. I, I was just going by the effect. I didn't. Yeah. I, yeah. It like touches his arm. You see these two beams of energy come at you, Sazen. Let me do this. Quick question. One that one of them launched. Sorry, continue. Uh, one of them completely, utterly misses you. However, as you're twirling around, you do a spin. And as you come to the front, you see this beam strike you right in the face. I was distracted. All I heard is uh, you spin and then you come. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Joey. Of course. So that's 10 plus a d6. For 6, 12, 24 points of force damage. I'm down. You're down? At, you haven't been hit yet. I was hit in the last combat. Oh. Uh, before we went on whatchamacallit. So, yep, I'm down. I have to roll natural 20 to hit you. <laughs> you know that on these guys. <laughs> Sorry, Hellvog's coming up. Meowgi, <laughs> it is your turn. You're looking at okay. your familiar like... That's one crazy son of a bitch? <laughs> yeah. Seeing that... Xbit is in combat with something mm -hmm. with that halfling. Oh, that, that Meowgi's going to target him and cast you know it third level magic missile. Roll it. So that's 15 points of damage. You see Pinton his body starts to fall apart. As your magic missiles strike him, the shoulder falls off. His entire arm falls off. His leg falls apart. He was stitched back together. <laughs> He's dead. Uh, and I'm gonna mentally tell Ixbit to go watch over Elkson. He doesn't reply yet, because it's not his turn. Yeah, no, I know. It is now Balin's turn. He looks around and he sees most of his forces are dead right now. Well, as you see, he has a small cut right here on his uh, on his lower lip that goes down as it starts to split open as he screams and you see just a mass of teeth and tentacles as Talia grasps her head and falls down to the ground and then he jumps off the side of the ship that's okay I have a hunter's mark I still know where he is for now absolutely you do I didn't move that shit for a reason <laughs> you did not 
He <laughs> is now 30 feet under the water. Is he drowning? <laughs> no. A warlock of the depths, I, he can swim and breathe water. Elkson, it is your turn. It's 30 feet below the ship. Suzanne, get your ass up. A healing word on Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, spells, second level, for a whopping five. Hey, five is, f five is the same as 50 right now, honestly. <laughs> and then I'm going to keep my hunter's mark on him so I can keep track of him. But, um, let's see. Let me... Meowgi's still got a lot around him. Who looks the hurt, most hurt around Meowgi? Molly. Er... Like... Ath? <laughs> Ath? Me? Well, no, <laughs> like, what enemy looks the most hurt? Like, I uh, think Molly. might be able to take him. Okay. Then, yeah, uh, I'll go for Molly. Come on, Alorna, don't fail me now. Ooh, 28! Yeah. 28 <laughs> hits. <laughs> Come on, roll good on that damage die, please. One. That's five. Damn it. Right. She is still up. Arg. Not for long. So Zen, your turn. All right, so the one that is north of me is the one that just almost killed me, right? Correct. And it's still pretty. It's pretty hurt. It's badly injured. Your haste is gone. Your blade song's gone. Um, this might be a little bit overkill, but <laughs> I am going to cast lightning bolt at it because it made me mad. Uh, so if you can make a dexterity saving throw. All right, dex save. How does an eleven sound? Eleven sounds like he's going to take the full twenty-two points of lightning damage. 22. Hell yeah. Guess how much health he had left. Get it, Suzanne. 21. <laughs> ah! oh, so as, a, as I'm getting ready to cast a spell, and you guys have to forgive me for this, I I, uh, I, I look at him and I'm like, do you know what happens to a Sahagin when it's struck by lightning? <laughs> <laughs> I just blasted off the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Toad that bitch. I like that. Nice. Then I'll use the, my movement so to much. get out. <laughs> If anyone here would be Storm, it would be Suzanne. <laughs> it is yeah. now Molly's turn. Molly looks extremely hurt. Looks at where Balin was as she jumps off the side. Opportunity attack. Yep. I can't do that since I'm prone, huh? You can at disadvantage. Really at disadvantage. Bet, Swing bet, at him! Make her fall! <laughs> Trip her! <laughs> 11 does not hit, so do your surprise. Uh -huh. Can't you do your surprise again? Yes, I can. Miyagi, a 6 does not hit. Yeah, no, I figured. A third. Uh, what's the plus on the surprise? Hold on, I gotta go read it. That means the 13 is close. Suspenseful music is fitting. <laughs> Plus five to hit. Her AC, <laughs> you rolled a 13. Her AC is 16. Ah, fuck her up. No, this is a bad thing. What? Roll your damage on the surprise. I hope you kill her because she's still going overboard with your axe attached. <laughs> Don't I roll a d20 for the attack, or no? It's a no, d4. your attack hit. So, you would roll. Um, it would deal one d4 piercing and one d4 acid. God, I hope that five foot damage was enough to help. <laughs> so roll two d4. I'm trying. Hold on. You got this. You could lose your axe. You got this. Four. Oh, 
four points of damage for her three health left. <laughs> Woo! You <laughs> ain't getting away today, bitch. As Molly <laughs> is down. The fucking weapon. These other sea spawns run the fuck away. But then you feel the boat lurch again. We are out of combat. As we lost someone, we lost Damien. So let's stop this music. That's good. There we go. I'm back. I'm back. What happened? Do I roll stabling? No. Everything is fine. Okay. Uh, I just heard that it was lurching and then it was like, fuck you. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> we are out of combat. You guys, the sea spawns ran away. The boat did lurch how again. Far away. How far away is, uh, is he? Uh, how far is your uh, hunter's mark go? Within miles, I believe. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. uh, hold on, I'm trying to see where it says. Um, to the spell and you do the extra damage. Um, oh god, it doesn't say in the spell description. Hold on. I'm going to have to fix all the cameras again, but I will later. I'm sorry. It's okay. Not your fault. Uh, let's see. The general range is at 90 feet, but wording implies that it does not end if the target gets out of the range. Uh, so it's I believe it's going to be long. He, you see him. He was about... 50 feet away, and then all of a sudden you feel him more than 600 feet away. Okay. And is it straight down? Is it out? Straight down. No, I'll shout that out. Fucking asshole, 600 feet straight down. Are we going for him? Do we have a way to? Because he could fucking come right back if he wants to. As I'm like going down the pole to check on everybody. Miyagi. You see Talia is very short of breath. You see black veins start to appear on her throat. I, th I think I think Miyagi's gonna get down. Don't fuck with that. Toby. Sorry, he's fucking with the cup. Um... I think Miyagi's gonna like lean down and like bend down. Be like, Captain, are, are you okay? Is what can we do? Um... Anath, you are right there. Get ship to port. Bear, you're the captain now. He says she says that to me or Miyagi. Miyagi, because he's oh, the one okay. that right. Now, he she was gonna say it to the first person to her. So was that? Did she name a port? No. Or just okay. Two just port. any port. Mm -hmm. right. I I know I'm not there. Can I go there and then see if I can cast a medicine check to see if she? Absolutely, like, you can run up and you hear the same things at at that time. I, I'm, not that I'm gonna, gonna do medicine, the same. But, as soon as I get down from the pole, I'm doing the same. So I rolled a seven, because clearly I'm medicinal. <laughs> I rolled an 18. You're not familiar with it. It looks like a mixture between poison and a curse. And she has still massive wounds before. Um, with your 18, you will know that it... And I know Helvog is probably going to be rolling... Uh, and you definitely, with your 18 as well, you notice, th you know that she's probably going to survive, but she needs rest. Alright. 
right. Um, I will use the um. How many charges of good berry do I have? I believe you can do four. I uh, three, three. I'll, three. I'll use the. I'll, I'll use one of the charges right now, and just like hand her a little uh, good berry. I know it doesn't do much, but it's something. <laughs> With everyone sort of crowding the captain, Miyagi's gonna go check on Silas. Oh, that's good because Silas is up, but failed to save. Um, Silas is seems to be afflicted by the same thing, but he's passed out. Well, he's next on my list. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, I healed him while I, we were in combat, so of course I'm going to check on everybody I healed. Yep. It it appears that they are under the affliction of something that is not quite a curse, not quite poison, that it is working out of the system. Your healing is taking effect. You see wounds being closed, but they are going to be incapacitated for a while. I... The captain gets six plus her level. Nice. Yeah, that is... It is definitely working. And Helvog, you know that there are some afflictions that are um, not quite understood yet. But in your expert opinion, she will live and she will be fine, but it might take a little bit of just rest. Mm-hmm. Us, uh, can you take the captain to her quarters? Yeah, I was going to say, let me go lay her in a bed. Okay. Ath, as you pick her up and you start coming down, you see this red, this goblin start running up to the front of the ship. We've got a breach underneath! I run down as soon as I hear that. You run down. You see that there are holes in the ship, and the crew is frantically trying to repair it. I will help with druid crafting any way I can to like stretch the wood to cover the holes. Like, and on that note, we are going to take our break. So we're going to take a quick five minute break, come back and see what happens now that the PCs have control of the ship. Great combat guys. We see almost you all... died. <laughs> of course no, you, you almost died. Think. It was a major fight. You all killed a lot, too, in the beginning. So, we will see you all soon.
and we are back. So, our PC is having a very easy, breezy combat on C. Simple. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's stressful. So, you guys are running around the ship. You're helping with druid crafting, uh, taking damage control. This is what has happened. Almost all of your food is gone. Almost all of your fresh water is gone. The ship is crippled. The mast was actually damaged in that lightning blast as well. Um, it's still up, but your, your crew has told you that they would not trust putting the sail up. The captain and the first mate are incapacitated. You see the crew gathering on the deck of the ship. Um, and you see the cleaning lady that Sazen knows very well. You see Horgus. You see Redcap. And you hear you all are gathered together um, near the helm of the ship. And you start to hear murmurs. Well, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Who's going to Who's going to take charge? I think we should just he try to head north. No, no, we we need to just head back to the to the resort. That's the closest thing. You hear a bunch of murmurs going on. You hear peep emotions getting very very tense. A lot of worry in the air. Hearing all of this go on. <clears throat> Meowg is going to clear his throat. <clears throat> I understand that some of you have your worries. I understand that, and I'm addressing everybody. Let's face it, we're in a bit of a pickle. But, first off, who knows the seas best? Second off, closest port, where can we go besides the resort? We know that they can't fix us. And we'd be sitting ducks taking the same path. Exactly. So, as for leaders, I, among these others, and I'm going to point towards the party, will try my best, will try our best to lead you. You hear Forgus speak up. Who made you captain? Talia did, in fact. Well, isn't She's that... Of... How do we know that? Would you like to go and ask her? Or could you... And I'm going to point to Big Green. And you hear she a lot was of, right there. You hear a lot of other people seconding him. Yeah, who, who the hell is this guy? He's a brand new... Ah. I can assure you all, and I'll look at Horgus... I promise you that is what it was done. That's what Talia said. She looked at him and made him captain. See, Horgus, Horgus, is, Horgus is the chef, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. See, Horgus takes about a half a second. He's like, that's good enough for me. <laughs> and you hear another per Oh, sorry. You, you see another a halfling there. Look up like odd at Horgus. He's like, it's good enough for me. And what did you say? Horgus, I can try and help out with food. I can only do it so many times per day, but I can make more of those uh, berries mm -hmm. to help kind of resupply mm -hmm. and keep everyone sustained until we can get into port. Uh, that'd I, be good. I can make food and water. Yeah, and you're taking count of people as you're looking and looking at your spell slots and or thinking about your spell slots and looking at the crowd of people. Like I said, if you looked in our Discord about the number of uh, people, you can ration and d use all of your spell slots, because I did all the math. Um, you can ration and feed everybody and not starve. However, um, it it's going to be tight. 
it's going to be extremely tight. You're going to start taking some exhaustion levels. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll use the charges on the bow. I'll have mm -hmm. Goodberry prepared, use every spell slot I have. Like. But as you're looking at the crew and taking count, you notice some people missing. There's definitely been some death. You do not see... Where's the road boy? Not there. I'm going to go I looking. Can, I can sustain 45 people a day. Mm -hmm. There's much more than that. <laughs> so, again, you can ration and get there. Um, there's also your friend Helvog is not there. The super talkative weird one? Mm -hmm. Reginald? Mm -hmm. No, not Reginald. That's so sad. I I'm looking for the druid already as soon as I realize he's not with everyone. <laughs> First place I check is by the animals. And you see him there and Snowball. It, was it Snowball? Mm hmm. Is whining, pawing at him as he has multiple wounds and he is no longer breathing. I try healing word to see if it'll work. I'll do it second level. I'll use my last spell slot for second level spell slot for it. You feel the magical energy go out and does not find purchase. He's dead, Jim. I'll, I'll carry him up to uh, Helvog. Okay. Anything you can do? Last right. You can't bring him back? Isn't that your thing? Uh, not at my current power level. Helval, you see Elkson extremely distraught right now. She'll actually start, like, silently crying. Yeah, Paylor don't exactly like raising the dead. <laughs> Ignoring that comment, she's just going to bring him back to Snowball and profusely apologize to Snowball. All right. So, you guys have. Let me try to get this music going back again. What was the laundry woman's name? The one that I constantly hang out with? The laundry woman's name is. Brenda. Brenda? Brenda. Grenda with a G. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna go up to Grenda and be like, Grenda, I only have one question for you. Yes, is there, Devery. Is there still one? <laughs> there is not. Cezanne so starts quietly sobbing to herself. So, you guys are, we're going to fast forward through time a little bit. Oh, Thunderbolt. You didn't say a damn thing about Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt? Roll me a percentile. I swear to God, if you kill my horse. <laughs> I mean, it's not having it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. I should mute when I laugh at an appropriate Never time. Never get attached to horses. 30. 
Thirty. I'm a druid ranger. The fuck do you expect? Thunderbolt is actually perfectly fine. You actually see three sea spawn in his cage, heads crushed, and you see a little goo on his hooves. Good boy. Oh god, if her horse was dead too, oh my god, this would be the start of Elkson turning into the BBEG, like going dark side. <laughs> never, <laughs> never oh, expect horses to live. Again, druid ranger. Animals are my guy's thing. Yep. So, you guys limp along for a few days. Actually, you limp along for a day. Before the storms, they haven't stopped. They've gotten darker. Extremely dark. More thunder. More lightning. And then the winds start to pick up. So much that the ship is just battered again and again by the ra rising waves. As you are in the middle of well, maybe not in the middle, but you're on the edge of a massive storm front. Luckily, the ship does make it through, but more damage has been done. That's actually what the 30 was for. <laughs> I will say that you are all at exhaustion level one at this point in time after many well many days we'll say about a week of just limping in the ocean if there's any like hull repairs that need to be done Miyagi will try his best to fix holes with mending even if it's been between your there. mending and Elkson's druid craft you guys I've done some good patchwork, so you're not sinking. Okay. So after braving a fierce combat and the threat of starvation, dehydration, that's loomed over your heads for days, you get a little bit of spark of hope as you see a ship appear on the horizon, followed by two more. Followed by another one. And they start to approach your ship. Elkson, are you still in the crow's nest most of the time? Yeah, and whenever I'm not, I'm going to be with the animals. Um, you are the first one that gets to see the ship. They're flying colors of what looks to be like scales. Is it almost like the justice scales? And I'll, I'll just scroll. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say I would describe. I would shout out the flag that I see and describe it to any anybody that's on deck that can hear. Ah, fuck. We're in Gresh waters. You hear someone says. The fuck does that mean? Hold on to your coin pur purse. As they get closer and closer to the ship. One of them comes up next to the ship. And you see a figure. Human male. Dressed in finery with a very ornate hat with a very long plume of a feather. Multicolored. Hail there! Looks like you all are in some trouble. Are, are we all on the deck? No, I would assume so. They would get the captain when yeah. they, they might be boarded. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, we seem to be in a bit of trouble, if I say so myself. Well, we might be able to help you out. 
I'm staying in the crow's nest with my bow out, but hidden where they can't see that I'm holding my bow. Permission to come aboard. Uh, and Miyagi's gonna yell, "I, I can't." Yell, yeah, sure. You see you this insight. Sorry. Mm, sure, you can roll an insight, but it's... Insight just... is for body language rather than specifically a lie, so... All right. yeah. What'd you get? All right. Uh, 12. Kind of hard to read. He's definitely hit... At your distance, you can't really tell much because um, the one thing that you might be able to tell is kind of too far away. How many days did you say passed? Like a week? It was about a week. Yeah. All right. I'm going to roll my portal for that day. Yeah, go ahead. I I'm just going to assume my spell slots are gone. Do, do I have my health points back? Because you said we were exhausted, so. Yeah, you still get your... You guys are fully healed, but I'm going to assume that you get fully healed, but you're all at exhaustion level one. As you see, this individual raise his hand towards the figure next to him. As a shimmering portal opens, him and this individual step through. Another shimmering portal opens next to you, Miyagi, and they step out. Oh, fancy trick. <sighs> Why waste manpower when you can use arcane power? Pleasure to meet you, point. Captain. Pleasure to meet you, Acting Captain Miyagi of the Sapphire Cathedral. And Miyagi's going to bow. I am Admiral Brandon of the Plutocracy of Goresh. I see that you all are in pretty bad shape here. Well, on behalf of the Plutocracy, I welcome you with open arms. We can definitely tell you in and get you repaired. He reaches for something in his, be in his uh, belt. At what cost? Do you yell that from up top? Mm-hmm. And I'm still keeping oh. my bow out, but hidden. That's a smart, smart lookout you got there. Of course, there's always a cost. We can't just take on labor for nothing. So, I'll leave this with you. And you he hands you. Actually, you are going to need to get into Foundry, by the way. Miyagi. Alrighty. He hands you a scroll. I'll have you look over that, and if that's good enough for you, sign on the dotted line, and we'll be in business. <clears throat> this would be the reading He's gonna part. steal your voice. As you should see the Goresh contra contract in your inventory now. Inventory. Tell you what, for free, we'll give you some rations. We'll be back. Uh, we'll come back here in about an hour? Does that seem fair to you? Absolutely. I'm just he leaves. Read this over. He leaves one day's worth of rations. It's fine. And they dimension door back. Feel free to read the contract out loud. Oh dear. This contract binds the scribe and recipients into a deal of chosen escalation for an unending period of time. Well, this contract is voided by an agreement on part of both parties upon reading upon agreeing to signing this contract the recipient is bound to their agreed obligations and parameters with the first pact as is described upon completion of the agreed obligations and parameters on both sides of the initial pact the first pact is considered complete and this contract as a whole remains until the predetermined period of eternity, allowing the recipient, should they feel inclined, to invoke and trigger the second and third act any time thereafter through verbal acceptance and relative proximity of this of this officiant of the court, the <laughs> obligations and perimeters agreed upon within the second and third act then become binding and immediate to be fulfilled on the part of both parties <laughs> within an agreed upon period of time. Upon completion of the agreed obligations and perimeters on both sides of the second and third pact, the pact is considered complete and concluded. 
This contract remains in effect through all packs and thereafter, maintaining any agreed upon specifications and obligations <laughs> that remain outside the pack's o- completion. For eternity! <laughs> One, any <laughs> yeah. violation of this contract on part of the scribe and Im- immediately holds this contract null and void, requiring a penalty payment of 150,000 gold pieces to the recipient to be paid immediately. Any violations of this contract on the part of the recipient immediately locks the claim and ownership of the recipient, invoking the laws of the pact primeval under the control and dominance of the scribe until reparation of lost funds to the amount of 300,000 gold, 300,000 gold pieces through goods and services further defined in the Goresh Code 58.49 subsection 14 clause B. Alrighty, guys, let's just now get on to the first pact. <laughs> the undersigned agrees to enable safe passage into docks, spe- specifically the Torn Repair Yard, without undue further damage to ship and crew. Upon docking, the undersigned and any souls on board said ship at the time of signing will be required to pay the administration fees, including but not limited to docking, relocation, tavern location, weapon certification, weapon peace bonding. Magical screening, application for use of arms and spell, and dock use tax. The recipient agrees to the rate of repair offered by said dock for the full repair and recovery of said ship, with payments not ex- not to exceed established market rates on the date of signing. In addition, <laughs> said ship will provide transference of goods between the port of call. By the way, I did post this in Discord for all of you to read, in case you <laughs> have to, uh, <laughs> if you want to read it instead of hearing uh, Miyagi say it, but. Feel free. Continue. <laughs> uh, what say? Between port of call and any feasible feasible location, no less than three occurrences without any payment. Fel- failure to comply with a request for transport in a reasonable time determined by the port authority will result in immediate forfeiture of said boat and entrance into servitude status for all and current and future crew. So- Second pact. To explain the first pack, basically, so basically, <laughs> basically, they'll dock you, they'll tow you, dock you, and they will repair the ship. However, you will be we responsible have to pay for the repairs and all the fees associated with docking normally. Exactly. And you have to also give three free transports of whatever goods. Which could On be fucking of- black market shit. On top of weapon certification, magical screening, applications for arms and spells, and taxes. Yes. So, so when you said Grisham, you really meant Ferengi, right? Absolutely. These are the Ferengi of this world. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> the second pack. The undersigned agrees to complete fund all repairs and supply stockage needed for a month of sea travel. Additionally, the undersigned will be solely responsible for 50% of any fees and fines accrued at the time of docking only. The recipient agrees to reimburse the undersigned within a time period of the undersigned choice not to be limited by natural disasters or active deities. Failure to comply with reimbursement will result in immediate forfeiture of said boat to the undersigned an entrance into servitude status for all and current future crew until reparation of lost funds to the amount of 350,000 gold pieces for each soul. Wait a minute. Servitude. <laughs> so Fuck that. Wait a minute. That's 350,000 gold pieces per person? However, what that does is that says that they will repair and take care of everything and that you are responsible for paying half of all the fees in a reasonable amount of time. Or, you know, we go into servitude until we pay off 350,000 gold. That's true. Yeah. And we don't know how much the fees are, so they could just fucking upcharge the shit out of it. Or the undefined term of a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. They could tell us we have a day to pay 200,000 gold. Oh, fuck. The third pack. And then there's the, the fine un- print. <laughs> yep, there's the fine print. I just saw that. 
The undersigned agrees to completely fund all repairs and supplies stockage for needed a month needed for a month of sea travel. The recipient agrees to reimburse the undersigned within a time period of the undersigned choice, not to be limited by natural disasters. D- didn't I just read that? Nope, this is it looks, it's the same. It looks it's, the oh, same. Oh, it does look the same. It, it's very Jeez. much the same. However, they are paying for There's, all of it, not half of it. However, the under. <laughs> Five hundred thousand gold pieces. Yeah. <sighs> Failure to comply with the reimbursement will result in immediate forfeiture of said boat to the undersigned and entrance and servitude status for all current future crew until reparation of lost funds to the amount of fifty thousand gold pieces for each soul. Fine print. By signing this document. And the recipient agrees to a 425,000 gold piece processing fee to be assessed in any addi- in addition to any other fees covered by this contract. This processing fee can be marked in full or marked paid in full if any recipient agrees to no less than five victories in approved testing ground. Any and all fights coordinated by said representative of the trade council non will be non-negotiable. Such participants will be allowed to utilize their own equipment. However, said equipment becomes property of Goresh until completion of said victories. Those without arms or ar- or and armor may attain them from the Council of Entertainment and execution for a nominal fee or an additional three victories. Any equipment left on the field for more than one minute becomes property of Goresh in perpetuity. Signed, by the agreed upon parties under the laws of the Pact Primeval. There's actually a little bit more to the fine print there um, that I forgot to put in there. Basically, any and all fees can be completely covered with five victories in the testing grounds. Which we have no clue what that contains, so, you know, that could be going up against a level 20 one-on-one and, you know... Hey, that's a question you can always ask him when he comes back. This seems like a load of horse shit. And I've dealt with plenty of that by now. I think... I think I'd call... Call a meeting. Between the party... Alkson, I would like you to roll a wisdom check. Okay. Yeah, between the party and... Yeah, just between the party. For right now. That's not great. That's a nine. That's a nine. Uh, you'll have advantage on this, actually. Oh. Bonk. I'll take the 16. That symbol. You've seen it before. On something that you carry. Uh, Is it the parchment that my mom drew the sketch on? Absolutely. You see a symbol that he has that he wore on that picture. So he was with them? And she's saying this out loud, like as she's staring at the sketch and she's staring at the symbol and then staring at the contract and like She's very perplexed by this right now. Mm -hmm. So you call a meeting of the party. Okay, guys. So we have been towed to a port or left here stranded. But there's a contract that we need to sign. And if, if we don't pay them... A large sum of money, more, much more than we've all seen in our lifetimes combined. We become slaves. So... Or we can t- fight. Oh yes, there was that bit. I do intend on asking him about that, but I... I'll fight. Oh, you look rather determined. Are you okay? And uh, she'll show the sketch again, pointing at the symbol. The person who saved my mother might be there. 
tragic backstory aside, do what? we do we take? <laughs> no, no. Josh gets really ins- confused by that. Like I, I'm gonna take four points of psychic damage. <laughs> Josh gets inspiration. Miyagi does not. Josh does. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. As a player, I saw that line. I saw it. I was like, I gotta take it. I gotta take it. So, do we get towed to port and possibly be slaves, or we can fight? But slave part I kind of don't like. I'm just gonna be frank. Um, it's either. Go and fight and possibly be slaves, or be stranded here and possibly die. So. Sizen, Ath, Elbog, you two have been awkwardly quiet. I cannot be the only one speaking. Well, I was just thinking that considering the likelihood of where Elson comes from. We really do hear about her mother quite a lot. And, and really, check? I, I mean, we were in an island, we were in a dungeon with robots and somehow there was a Druid lady that seemed to tie to her. Now here we are thousands of miles away in a different part of the world. And here we are again. It is, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, it's kind of, you know, odd because anyway what were you saying about a contract oh yes so i have to sign a contract and if we break any of the clauses each person on the crew i mean i was like five hundred thousand gold pieces so i and we become slaves so like kind of a bad thing or we can fight and win five that times is, is there a clause for perhaps betraying everybody on the ship and just you know walking away Let's just put it like this. You think you're hunted by a couple of scary mages? We'd be hunted by a fucking country. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, we wouldn't be exactly stranded. Depends on how far we are from land. We could all walk. Where can we walk? And I'm going to point towards the ocean. Where can we walk? We need well, to find out if there's any other options, any other <sighs> ports available. Also, I think, as shitty as it may sound, having some place to take care of Talia would be a good, good thing. Uh, anybody on this boat that knows where we are exactly? Like, can anybody give us an estimate about where the nearest port is, other than this, you know, racketeering racket? I um, he's coming eight. back in an hour. He, he says, where can we walk? And I walk over to the edge of the ship and jump off and land and walk around the ship on the water. I do this every morning for you guys. Wouldn't all your spell slots have been consumed to make the food for rations? It's a ritual. I cast it every hour. Even what so have you been good. doing all that time? I thought you were just weird. (laughs) Even so, there's, what, maybe less than a hundred of us? Like... Besides, we can take down the government if they decide to fuck us over. I mean, we're strong. Look at her! And I'm gonna point to Big Green. (laughs) We all have to fight, or would it just be one of us? I don't know, I plan on asking about that. Oh, I'm all for fighting, too. But It suffice. says five wins, so if the five of us fight, that should suffice. So then we would have to register. Or, or is it five each? I don't know. Ask questions. He's coming back in an hour. Plan on asking questions. Anything we want to clear the air about. You might want to get a list of all the fees. It seems to be a lot of them. I don't even think I will bother, because we may not be able to pay all that. Um, no, but at least you would have them down in writing, and they can't back out from them. 
I'm sure they plan on giving us a receipt of some kind whenever we arrive there. But I think clearing the debt with five fights will be kind of easy. Ath, what are your thoughts? Quiet. <laughs> because as a player, I'm kind of confused. But I do think that we do need to find out more information before making a decision. But if you guys are wanting to go fight and get the five wins... I am here to carry you guys. <laughs> well, we also need details on what these fights involve. Again, I said I, I was asking questions. Why is, is anybody... I'm the captain here! Is nobody <laughs> listening to me? With all due respect, ma'am, you may be the captain, but you're still a cat. And you're still a laundry girl who gets drunk all the time. I'm a cast lightning ball. <laughs> Roll dexterity saving throw. Oh fuck! Are you actually? Uh, yes, I am. No oh, fucking! I'm burning my port and I'm giving myself a sixteen. <laughs> what is my spell DC? Hold on. My sixteen. Okay, you still Roll. take half damage. One sec. <laughs> it's fine. Now does Joey oh. cast lightning bolt or Suzanne? Oh, Suzanne, definitely. But that's okay, because it's only 20 damage. <laughs> you all see a lightning bolt come from Suzanne and strike Miyagi. Okay, okay, you two. Stop now. I am a You don't need to go kill each other. Okay. <laughs> so, moving along. <laughs> Fucking <And> hurt. <laughs> An hour passes. The same shimmering blue energy appears as the Admiral comes back through with his token mage. Well then. I, I, I Oh oh uh hold on. Just before mm -hmm. the hour is up. I am going to cast Zone of Truth. Okay. Pull that up. All right, magical zone. Creature that enters for the first time. Okay. He comes through. Well, have you all had enough time to look over the contract? Oh, yes, it's quite long. Um, we do actually have a few questions, if you don't mind answering. We possibly sign this. Um, first off, about this battlegrounds, this tournament, this thing with victories and stuff. First off, what are we fighting? Second off, is all debt paid upon completion? Third, is it five victories per person? Or can a party, say us, represent the whole crew and win five victories? As he comes in and he starts to talk, he... Hmm. Pretty smart. Because spell does state he is aware. Oh yeah, no, I... So... I, I understand they are aware. <laughs> if you all want to res represent the entire ship, then you will all have to do five victories in total as a group. Now... As far as the type of combats, that's up to the Game Masters. You all may be paired up, you may be all together, you all may be single. But there's always the chance of victory. It has to be an even fight, or else it's not entertaining. And who are the spectators? Why? The public. So basically they're gladiatorial fights. Absolutely. Gotcha. Are they to the death or no? Absolutely. There's nothing nothing more thrilling than the actual danger of someone else while you are safely in your seat. What are the strengths of all these other fighters? I wouldn't know. I'm not a game master. Well, like he said, it's up to the game master and 
pretty evenly fight. But if he can get five victories, which is very rare, I will tell you that, then all fees, all debts, everything will be covered. You will, however, be relocated, whichever people are your designation designates, uh, relocated to the Colosseum. And you will be begin your servitude there. Servitude? Yes. We are providing you a service. You are providing us a service. So we're slaves until we win this competition. No, 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 no. We do not use that word. You are servants, indentured as you are, because we are looking at the damage to the ship and the sorry state of your crew. You don't have many options. I mean, if you refuse, that is perfectly fine. You will have to pay the fee for trespassing in our waters. Oh, and what is that fee? Oh, well, let's see. You are within five nautical miles and you did not <laughs> announce your presence. You did not greet us in the proper way. Uh, I believe that tally is up to 375,000 gold pieces. But upon completion, all fees and dues will be paid for. Oh, absolutely. All fees and dues will be paid for. The ship will be stocked, repaired. And any medical concerns taken care of. Um, what is this weapon certification and weapon peace bonding? Oh, <laughs> well, we would have, if you were not going to the Colosseum, we can't have people just walking along the streets who are not citizens of the plutocracy. So we would have our expert mages document them and then create those weapons inert while you are in our city. But if we're in the Colosseum, you leave our weapons alone? Oh, absolutely. That's part of the fun, is we don't know what they will do. However, if you do not complete your five fights, all property belongs to Goresh. If your weapon is left on the ground for more than one minute, it is property of Goresh. Say, say... I'm going to point towards Susan and I. Say we knock an enemy spellcaster's book out of their hands, and we grab it. Does that mean it's our book by that? Absolutely. Within a minute time. Absolutely. Hmm. So as long as we grab their other equipment before they can get it back, it becomes our property. Especially Ab if we kill them, right? Absolutely. When we win these five victories, our time as indentured servants also comes to an end? Absolutely. And Hello. do you have any wine? Oh, we do have... We do have some wine. I could definitely... Oh. Um, yeah, but it'll cost you. Yeah. And it looks like your crew... Fighters? Uh, what did you say, Miyagi? How are accommodation for fighters, combatants? Is it back-to-back, -back, one after another, or is it spaced out on a daily basis? Uh, accommodations, uh, you all share cots in, inside the Coliseum. Do we get to rest between we'll fights? Ask. Yes. That will be up to the Game Masters, but normally, yes. I pull out the sketch, and I'll show it to him. Do you know this person? Ooh, ooh. Let's see. Oh, he rolled low. Thank and I'm 100% going to roll inside on whatever the hell that he says. He rolls extremely low, which is out of character. Very good for you. <laughs> no, I don't recognize that person. I He's, rolled a natural 20 for that insight. He is <laughs> telling the 100% absolute truth. I was going to say, did he pass or fail when he walked in? Do I know whether he's going to tell the truth or not? He failed his saving throw. Okay, so I know anything comes out of his mouth is the truth. I don't know that, though, so... Well, and it also looks like your crew could probably use some more uh, divine uh, help. We could provide that as well. What deity do you follow? Myself? 
that's kind of a personal question. Going into servitude is personal. Well, yes, but it looks like uh, you don't really have much of a choice, which is always very good for business. Like, you could, anyone who's paying attention to Elkson will be able to tell she's getting, like, pissed off, like... Oh, these are so slimy much. people. She's not, like, doing ice breath, but, like, basically icy little cr snowflakes or whatever are coming out of her mouth. Like, it would be smoke if she was fire breathing, but... So, does any of your crew absolutely need uh, any healing, raising, anything like that? Raising? Oh yes, I I have I have plenty of clerics. What's the restrictions on that? How long? Hmm. Well, how much? <laughs> That's the right question. Let's see. Uh oh, the cat got out. Oh no. Well. How long has someone been dead? About a week. That's possible. That's going to cost you, though. How much? Eh. You'll need to come up with at least 1,500 gold pieces. Or you can add one more victory on. And how can we be sure that you won't go back on any of this and add on anything else? He looks offended, but it's mock offense. You can tell. He like, we people of Goresh are honorable and we follow our contracts to the letter. Yeah, nothing in this says anything about you having to pay us if you fall back. Actually, it does. In the very beginning, if we do not pay, then we owe you 1,500 gold pieces. Or I'm Compared sorry, 1,050. <laughs> Compared to 500,000. I'm sorry, I messed up that number again. 150,000. Well, we are taking all the risk. We're doing most of the work. And what but exactly is so risky? of repair work well we run the risk of you not actually paying us back for our time and materials we're running the risk of bringing in terrorists into our country we do not know you you have not been vetted you seem more than capable enough to handle a single ship i highly doubt we well, are a risk to you well it seems like you have made your decision we will depart and leave you uh be however we expect our payment for your trespassing. I'm sure Miyagi would chime in at yes. this point if he were here. This, this like, would let's be totally not allowing this to happen. Joey, I will yeah. allow you to play Miyagi. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> considering that I'm half cat, half dragon, half wizard, I would certainly be neglecting my responsibilities to. I don't know why I'm using this voice, but I am. No, I'm just <laughs> thinking cat dog, but a cat and a dragon. <laughs> I think that uh, what my colleague means to say here is that we would be delighted to participate in these games and you have our full and unadvised, un there's a fancy word I'm trying to use here, but because, unwavering. Yes, because my brain is half dragon. I can't think of it right now. So hey, yes. lizard brain. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, then. Also, I kind of wish that I was nearly as powerful as Sazen, but I guess I'll just always live in her Yeah, The kitty! <laughs> they found the kitty! So, will that be five victories or six? Well, because I am half dragon, I feel empathy with my colleague here. <laughs> and because of the fact that I just know that we're not getting out of the scenario without bringing back her pet druid, we're going to do six victories. He's not a pet! <laughs> I very well I'm half, I'm half cut Br bring the corpse up <laughs> and we will do what we can if the if the spell fails you will not be on the hook for the six 
However, we will um, actually no. If the spell fails, you will still be on the hook because it does still cost us money. I will make that addendum to the contract. He starts to write. Fantastic. This is Suzanne talking. Fantastic. Now, where did we fall on that wine? I'm going to go get Druid Boy. I'll go get Tally. I will part with a cart of wine for you. Upon I'm going to get Silas, too. No, Silas, Silas is alive. Silas has the same affliction. Well, yeah, Silas and Talia both were afflicted, though. Right, but they, they just need time. There's nothing more that you can do magically for them. Okay, so we don't... Okay, so This then, is only the resurrection. Let's just go get Druid Boy. Yeah, this is the raised dead. You okay there, buddy? Apparently, Helvog doesn't give a shit about his friend, so... No. I said that Paylor frowns on raising the dead. Nothing about resurrection. And I said... I also can't do that right now. Yeah, but you're not trying to get him in on this. Because you're doing such a wonderful job. I'm getting my friend back. I am fighting for him. So, you bring up... Let's see. Nice touch of the music. I'm lo loving this music. <laughs> Let me pull up the NPCs. The broke boat crew. You are bringing up Graylin. Mm -hmm. You see another person gets the mention doored over. This individual goes over. He has a very long nose. Very fine gray hair. Hmm. Lifts up his arm. Smells a bit. Mm. Very well. Starts why? Throw out. Why do I get? Why do I get the vibe of? Here, children. I've got some candy. Quite possible. He throws out this fine dust as you see a circle appear around Graylin. And runes come up. Well, is there anyone that would aid in this ritual? I'll do what I can. So, can I bring Snowball up? Oh, Absolutely. yeah. I feel like oh, Snowball oh. would help. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll help because I definitely want to make sure Palar is involved in this. So, this is a skill check, this is a ritual challenge. Basically, we are using Matt Mercer's rules for resurrection. Everyone, three, up to three people, can roll a check. It is up to you through roleplay what type of check you will actually do. Whether it be intimidation, persuasion, arcana, um, whether you offer to sacrifice a magical item, whatever. It is The roleplay is completely up to you. After you roll your check, whether you succeed or fail, um, the DC, you will add or subtract to the difficulty of resing. The base difficulty is 10, plus 1 for every time the individual has died. So, who would like to go first? So, does Snowball count? Like, can Snowball do something, or would I have to get Snowball to do something? Uh, I will let Snowball do something. Okay, I think I, I will bonding. I will handle snowball. Okay. I will do a nature check. I will go over and I will um druid craft basically vine I will hold his hand and druid craft vines that wrap around the both of our hands and say that nature is not ready to take you yet. Snowball still needs you here. Melora still watches over you. That's going to be more of a persuasion check. But with advantage. Okay. Thank God for advantage. 19. You see a third of the runes flare up with a green bluish light. 
and settle back down, but steadily hums. Snowball will come up, use its snout and its nose to push on it, and then <laughs> roars for an intimidation check. Pick up or I'm going to eat you. <laughs> that's a, that's going to be a 22. You see those lights flare up. Helvog, you said you wanted to participate. How do you? Yeah. Um, it's going to be a religion and preach the tenements of Palar. Let's hear him. Yeah, right. <laughs> come on, you can come up with something. Not, not in the state I'm in. <laughs> All right, roll your religion check. Seventeen. All right. Now let me go ahead and make this a public roll. I rolled. What did I roll, people? Six. A six. I, I have a feeling he ain't coming back. For Elkson's 19, the difficulty was dropped by two. For Helvog's 17, the difficulty was dropped by one. So we're at a seven. For Snowball's Snowball? 22, was dropped by two. You see moments pass as Graylin starts to take breath again, but is definitely still unconscious, but is alive. You see a huge wave of relief wash over Elkson. I will, I will immediately tend to him. I don't have any spell slots otherwise I would, but yeah, anything I can do without magic. Well then, shall we get you all to sign? Sign. They already brought him back, so. Yep. Does anybody? Yeah, I will. Does anybody not sign? Or does anybody refuse? I sign, but I'm huffy about it. <laughs> all right. Questionable. I think I think Miyagi is the last person. Well, I role played you as a few, a few minutes ago, and you were quite excited to sign for it. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's cool. Sorry, so, I had cat stuff to handle. So, and we, you were also singing praises of Suzanne. Woo! <laughs> Sounds so about right. As you guys are getting towed now, you see the horizon shift from nothing but open sea to a bustling port town, port city actually, boarding the, bordering the docks as you are getting pushed in are two large stone statues that tower over you. They're both of the same man with flowing hair and a thick mustache that meets his sideburns. One hand is outstretched and the other one holds scales. As in judgment scales, trade scales. Upon getting closer, you see that there's a cacophony of movement on the docks. To anyone who isn't used to this type of environment, it would look like utter chaos. People yelling over each other, crates being moved from one spot to another not 20 feet away from where they once were, bright colored fabrics uh, and banners, ba one bearing a fish, one two cross spears, another a feather over a sea of azure or azure mark different organizations and ships that are present. You wait for what seems like hours as other ships are moved in and out of docking until you are ushered further down the docks around a rock outcropping, but still within the dock proper, you see a completely dilapidated Boards are missing, are missing, rusted metal and fraying ropes. 
It is here, the overflow area, that you are docked. The disembarking area is blocked by a contingent of guards, each of them wearing an open-faced helm with a plume of hair dyed in red and shields that seem to be made to interlock together. The five of you are ushered off the ship and walk through the town. You see... This is unlike any city you have been to before. You see the poor right next to the ultra rich. There is no middle ground. There is the few, very few rich and the very few destitute. As you approach a lar the largest structure in this entire city, a circular Colosseum. None of you are checked. None of your weapons are taken. You are ushered into a small door that is heavily locked. You travel down corridor after corridor after corridor until you come into what seems like the bunking area. There are a bunch of cots, straw, if that, for your comfort, lining all over the place. There's no torch light or anything. There is some natural light that comes in, but there's, it's filled with shadows. It's dirty. It's dusty. Through the beams of filtering sunlight, you catch glimpses of a strange figure stepping lightly in the darkness looking restless and exhausted at the same time entirely out of place amidst the other combatants here is a pale young man whose gentle features are betrayed by recent hardships that he suffered stands about five foot three at a glance it seems like his only weapons are a rusty rustic quiver and a longbow that's tied to his hip a sharp scar nearly defi divides his face diagonally disappearing um, hold on a when when we got in here if it's that dark and shadowy light all right I always bring the light of Pelar with me yep well this, all, this will happen before you cast your light while his hair keeps one eye hidden, his old cloak does absolutely nothing to conceal a pail of stunted antlers. Matching animal ears, the terrible scarring on his chest, or perhaps more obviously the fact that his entire lower half is a dustly covered, lightly speckled deer. Despite looking like he hasn't slept for days, the fawn seems to be filled with a quiet determination. And it is on that note that we are going to end tonight. I was going to say, oh, you bring the right hand right at the end. <laughs> so close. Finally. <laughs> so we will end our session how we end all of our sessions with our bitches, gripes, complaints, comments, questions answered. We're going to start with Damien the DM. It was a fun session. It was definitely intense. Sad I didn't get to hunt down Balin, but uh, glad I got to uh, raise Graylin. <laughs> um, noticing a pattern in the big name. bad guy gets away. The reoccurring bad guy. <laughs> more, more satisfying when we get to kill him in ten more levels. <laughs> More Anything else, Damien? Uh, no, I, I, I enjoyed the RP moments that we did get to have. Um, and this should be really interesting for Elkson. Absolutely. We have entered our first character arc chapter. Next, we're going to have Helvog. Ah, uh, we lived. I don't hate you. <laughs> <laughs>
we'll see about our next Sunday session. Uh, yeah. Next, we're gonna have F. Um, I feel like this is some Squid Games type 100 <laughs> crap going on. I have yet yeah. to see that. It's so good. Oh my god. Uh, have you seen the 100? I just yeah. watched episode 6 of Squid Games. Oh, it's is so it on good. Netflix or what? Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. yeah, I don't have yeah. Netflix. I canceled that. But combat was fun. You almost uh, lost your axe. Oh my god. Yeah. That would have been. Oh, I was hating it. I was like, oh my god, if she hits with this and she doesn't kill her, she is going to lose her axe. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Shit. Gotta remember. Remind oh, me next good, game though. I need to. Remind me next game I need to discuss with the with you people on on undead and turning. Uh, well, to be fair, they yes. haven't seen it yet, so. Yes, exactly. That's why I said I needed to discuss it with them. That's why I forgave. Why it? I I had the thought in my head when we came back from break, but I just lost it. So. Next, we're gonna have Miyagi. It was a good session. Almost died like usual. Um, glad I got to lead something and be a be a captain. That was fun. Um, it's gonna be hard to give those privileges up. <laughs> um, but it was good. I I liked it. Combat was hard, but you know, it is what it is. There was tons of different things I could have did, but I didn't know if it would would have worked. Five more minutes, Discord G. <laughs> uh, and last, but definitely not least, and definitely not the strongest in the party, Sazen. Um, totally the strongest in the party. Um, it took a nat twenty to down. Okay, like you all were, but I had you were all your like, mess. ah, magic missile did me in. I was, I was killing it. Bitch, you're I welcome mean, for bringing you back. <laughs> but I mean. I cleaned up your mess last session, so... Well, I did get to play Miyagi for five minutes, and it was fun. I feel like I, uh, I righted a lot of wrongs with your character. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was fun, definitely had a good time. The combat was fantastic, and I uh, can't wait to see where the, uh, the Hunger Games go. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, at this point in time, trying to decide... It's been a while since y'all leveled. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I don't know, Damien. Do we get a level in your game? <laughs> that look. That only benefits you and Josh. That doesn't benefit anybody else. That's true. I think just for subjecting us to, the points. to these people, we should get a level. Yeah, these are pretty awful people, and it's been, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six sessions since you've leveled, I believe. Yeah, you can be level seven. Yes! Level seven, and Ren, if you're watching, make your character level seven as well. All right, so thank you for everybody who has watched. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we will see how Elkson's arc uh, plays out and why her savior was associated with these people or her mother's savior. She's got a lot of questions, that's for sure. Oh, yes. This should be fun. Uh, our next session uh, will not be on Halloween, unfortunately. Uh, we have people that have families, are doing stuff. I am possibly still streaming. Uh, where those people who will be able to play will be playing monsters from challenge rating 15 to 18. Pick which one you want. If I'm streaming, that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, besides that, y'all have a good night. Uh, let's find somebody to raid really quick. And we are going to go on break. Uh, actually, no, let's see. Hey, just feel free to click in the stream and keep up with the chat so you can. Let's see. 
You need a recommendation or something? Uh, well, I'm going to... I'm looking for another Dungeons & Dragons group. And some of the ones that I see are have a lot more people. So I would like to give some... I've got a suggestion of a D&D. Ah, I found one. Cool. Tonight, I'll be... So we're going to go ahead and stream and raid this group. And try to send some love. So we're going to go ahead and stream and raid this group. And try to send some love. This looks like an interesting group. We are off now. We have an orc cleric, gnome rogue, minotaur. Hello. Heck there. yeah. General Kenobi. Yay, they're happy to see us. Yep. Uh, I got it. If no one else did, I got it. Appreciate you. Hey. Charis will look at the group and say hey, to hi. the throne room, man. Yep. Get dressed. And by dressed, I mean armored. And go to the throne. All righty. Vandiel literally hop down the steps because she imagines that they. Let me stop this. All righty. There is that. Ah. Uh, all right. I hope you guys had fun. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for game, like always. Yeah, you're yeah, welcome. It was great. Please, uh, please make sure that uh, you get your characters uh, leveled up um, before our next session. Hopefully, within the next couple of days, so I can import them and all that fun stuff. Yep. yep. I'm about to. Yeah, what, work on it. What uh, class are you gonna get level up in, Damien? Druid, most likely. Druid. Okay. What's that split going to be now? Uh, that'll bring me to Druid level 3, Ranger 4. Here, let me actually... Turn on my camera so you guys can actually see me and all that. Oh, I gotta turn off my Streamlabs. It makes more sense for Druid to level...